And we are back. Uh, welcome to the Sourcing Challenge Weekly. Today is the 26th of January. Uh, we're back for another week. Dov, how have you been? I've been, you know, it's just like, it's so random, but, you know, I just said that it's so crazy that we just lost one month in the new year and just like, like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It's so, almost February. Uh, yeah. It's almost February and it's going to be a very short month and uh, uh, it's crazy. Oh, it's so, going to be four. It's going to be four weeks. It's just not going to be any more than four weeks. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm good. Um, I'm I'm good. I'm interviewing for jobs right now, which is really always funny, and good and fun, and uh, especially when you have really good conversations, and sometimes you have really funny ones as well. So you never know how it's going to end up, but it's all good. What about you? No, absolutely. You, I'm like, yeah, you're different. So you, are you somewhere far away? So. Not really far away. Uh, yes, we are at the moment traveling. Uh, we have some business in another country. And yes, it is possible, even though most of the world is in lockdown. Uh, what it, the only thing it takes is a lot of COVID tests, a lot of paperwork, and uh, a lot of waiting around in different instances. But it is possible. Um, so yes, I am spending some time abroad. Uh, we have some business in another country. So my lighting is not what it's used to uh, because this is basically the travel setup. Uh, but we're making it work. Yes. And we're not going to let this stop us. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I'm a bit more yellow than normally because uh, my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my daylight lamp and my ring light is at home uh, resting. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do with what I can. But we didn't, we didn't want to have you missed the episode. Uh, for anybody who listens to the podcast of this one and think that we missed last week, uh, what you're going to have to do, unless you've listened on Spotify, is to go in and try to download the episode again because uh, yours truly made a mistake and took a two-minute, which was basically an outtake that I wanted to use for a promo and uploaded that as a full episode. So if it says three minutes as an episode, you have the wrong episode. Uh, the actual episode was 36 minutes long. Um, so yeah, go back or go to the sourcingchallenge.com slash weekly five. And um, I, we have the, the episode embedded there uh, or what's the, the YouTube one there as well. Um, so you can listen to the whole episode because it was a good episode. So um, definitely listen to that. Uh, for the people that did listen to last week's episode, what we did talk about was to do a competition. Um, so you can win a signed copy of Katrina's book. Um, that is still on, but we are extending um, that you can you know, win that book. We're extending that for another week, uh, mainly because one, I was traveling. I couldn't actually make a lot of promotion about it. Uh, and two, a lot of people didn't hear it. So uh, because of the aforementioned uh, upload of two minutes, um, but the link to actually get to the competition is, is on the show note page. I'll put it on the show note page for this as well. And we'll recruit, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll push it out on all the social medias this week as well um, so that we can get some more people in that competition. Um, and so imagine how, they, how crazy random it must have been for some people who after two hours, 45 minutes, like two minutes? Huh? Two minutes? That's it? <laughs> At the show now? <laughs> New format? <Okay. laughs> so, yeah. No. But, yeah, we're, no, we're uh, back yeah. with the... With a, with a long format. So, it's so it's what happens when you try to upload something like at midnight before you have to leave at six in the morning to go abroad. Uh, you, you know, you get it, you get the wrong thing done, which, you know, things happen. But we, I, I got it sorted, but uh, Spotify didn't quite pick up on me deleting the episode and uploading it again. All the other podcast posts that, I, well, catchers that I saw did. Um, so yeah, if you listen on Spotify, maybe check it out uh, directly on our show notes page or on Lipsyn or any other podcast player, basically. Yeah. So Mark, what are we going to be talking about today? So we had a look at kind of what was out there. Uh, one of the things that you noticed is uh, a good friend, Aaron, um, who is a multi-talented sourcer, sourcing manager, um, also has a cooking show, I think, for some of her uh uh, some of the like it's private I'm still trying to convince her to do that cooking show more pri privately uh, if you if you follow her on social media you know exactly what I'm talking about Erin uh, Matthew who was on the sourcing challenge show uh, episode number 43 um, somebody was talking about um, sourcing on Reddit uh, and Erin did a really good talk and a webinar back in 2019 uh, but also what Erin does is that she's she has a Google sheet with all the kind of sub communities that is relevant to what she's doing so like sub communities on reddit that talks about jobs 
specific, like for nurses. Uh, and I think specific, specifically what the question was about was uh, diversity and inclusion, um, different sub communities and, and, and communities on Reddit that would make sense for, for diversity and inclusion sourcing. Um, she started building that out on the sheet as well. So obviously we're gonna put the link to that in. Uh, but from that, we kind of like, let's, let's talk about that sourcing on Reddit, let's talk, but also let's talk about sourcing on the quote unquote non-traditional sites like Reddit, Meetup, Slack, um, those communities that are there and hasn't been deplatformed yet, um, that are somewhat safe, but where people would hang out and self-identify as a specific infinity group. Awesome. Yeah, Erin is a, is a really good friend of ours and uh, watching her talk about Reddit is, I think is the same for me as watching Andre you know, code. You're like, or, or, or watching Aaron, you know, do the with APIs. Well. Yeah, exactly. this is definitely something that you want to rewatch because simply for the fact of the knowledge that they all share, you know, and how passionate they are about the topic. And Reddit to me is a very, uh, very, scary place i don't necessarily go there i tried to go there once and i couldn't understand what is going on i mean sorry i'm i'm, I'm not handling twitter properly so reddit is, a, is another level um and uh, so you know seeing how people actually can you know but this is definitely you know a lot of communities that are very niche communities and one thing as an advice that i was given when i was trying to create an account there that you Imagine that Reddit is a community. It's not about flooding them with job descriptions. It's not about spamming messages or saying, hey, I want to advertise this, I want to advertise that. You need to earn your, um, you, need, you need to put in sharing content that is useful and connecting and com commenting and you know, you know, on the other, other people's content before you actually can ask for anything in return. And yeah. You are being voted uh, by, you know, people can give you points, yeah. you know, so that kind of increases your karma, whatever that's called. Exactly. It's all by reputation. It's like nobody, if you just say, I mean, that's a bit the same. It's like, if you can see that a LinkedIn account has, you know, 10 connections and just got set up, you're not going to listen to what they're saying as well. Uh, it always used to be like any recruiter with less than 500 connections is like, what are you doing wrong? Um, yeah, it's everything on Reddit runs on what's your reputation on that. And if you're a spammy recruiter, you're not going to have a, like your shelf life is going to be very short there. Um, Aaron did a webinar for Career Arc back in 2019. It's an hour long. Um, so before you, you know, you're like, I'm on Reddit, I can do that. Watch the webinar because Aaron is, Aaron, as she said, she was, she was on Reddit before thinking of it as sourcing. Um, so she comes at it from a completely different angle. She didn't, she didn't look at Reddit as somewhere for her to source. And I, I lost my life. Um, and at the same time, connect that with, with, you know, how can you source on there? Yeah. So definitely, we're going to put the links into the description and to show notes. Uh, so you will be able to check it out. So it's Reddit Sourcing Toolbox uh, by Erin. And... So I know, Mark, that you've been throughout your sourcing challenge career, not as a, not as a host, but a, as a sourcer, that you have experience with a lot of different places where to find people. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember when, you know, Aaron was one of the first people to show how to look into meetups and into Slack and to other communities. So from, from your experience, like what, what was the most useful, maybe dive into a community in, in your case, because it's one thing to know how to do it, but just to scrape people, it means nothing if you cannot cross-reference those people anywhere else, because you might not have their full names or all the details that you can identify. So how, how would you go about and, and what was successful for you? Uh, my go-to has always been Meetup, um, mainly because it, it's two things. It's one, it's hyper-personalized for the most sake, um, because people like it's very much an affinity group and some of the meetup groups are very generalist, but some of them are hyper specific. Um, and especially anything that comes around technical, what I like with meetup is not just that people self identify with a specific affinity. It's also that 
meetups are in the nature of the group is where people take out time from their, you know, their, their free time to physically go somewhere to meet with other people to talk about that specific topic. So you really have to think, like you think extra about like, is this a meetup group I want to join? Um, so meetup ha has always been my go-to and, and more recently, more specifically on the events in the meetup group. So not just looking at, you know, the 5,000 people that's in the Java group, but who are the ones that went to the specific event where they talked about a specific framework and things like that. Um, so I, I use that. I, we were talking about like when, when I worked for Anaplan in London, that was basically my main thing. I, I took and I scraped the, the London Java community, which was at that time, like a five and a half thousand people list. Uh, now it's a lot. Longer. Now it's maybe a 15. It's like really big. It's really big. But, and that was without tools. So I literally went in with my own, you know, script of, you know, going in and scraping the, 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 the membership list and then uh, going in and kind of one by one going and getting all the information. And it took ages. But from those people, like it was exactly what I needed because I needed people who were in London who were interested in Java and was working with Java. And because the group went quite a long way back, I could take it from the back and saying, who are the ones that joined first? And then start with them because they are naturally the one with the most experience. And then cross-reference that with LinkedIn, with GitHub. Uh, I was using Amazing Hiring as well. So, you know, kind of that. It was early days of Amazing Hiring. So like now it would be much more streamlined. I did a lot of that manual and I basically spent three months going through that list. But that was where my placement came from as well. Um, because a lot of them weren't necessarily, they were on LinkedIn, but they didn't have a very broad uh, profile in terms of what they were doing but I yeah. knew that they were I knew that they were Java and I like with some of it I knew what they were interested in so I, I used that a lot because it was so specific and I still do that now either with a new location or a specific niche technology where I'm like if it is a meetup group for it I'm going to look there uh, because that tells me that that's something somebody interested in it. And I remember as well, our friend Sophia, uh, she completely blew me away when we were attending SourceCon in Amsterdam and she was doing a very technical talk about exactly how, how her processes work around looking and tapping into different communities. And she was showing an example from, uh, I think she was looking into finding a developer uh, for, the, for the company that she worked for at a time. And she knew the, the exact different experiences that she needed and what i loved about her her strategy that she didn't just focus on that one or two key skills but as well she tapped into a few other additional kind of good to have but at the same time if you have interest in specific thing there's more potential that you will be a, interested in doing the job and so what she did she scraped all of those uh, different meetups and then um she prioritized people filtering all of them who, uh, depending on how, how many people match in all of those groups. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, of course, the priority number one is finding, let's say, people who are in all four of those meetups. Mm, yeah. You know, then trying to focus on them because as you said, like if we're looking at numbers for meetup groups that can be thousands and it is literally thousands, you will, even with big tools, you will not necessarily be able to identify them. You know, no. e e still there's a lot of uh, junk that you will be just deleting because if someone's name is Lisa, you, it's so generic. You, I even mean, if you know location, you know, you good, might just. The good thing put, about meetup, because it's like, like, yeah, depending on how many results you have, you have sometimes where the meetup group are hyper niched. Like there's 50 people in that group. And you really want to get to talk to all 50. And some of them just have a first name. But a lot of meetup profiles has a profile picture as well. Um, so even the ones where I'm like, I'm not going to get anything by doing the name with whatever the niche is. But the profile picture, a lot of times, gave me something. Or it wasn't a name. It was a nickname that they had in their meetup, which was the same yeah. that they had as their as their, you know, Twitter. on Twitter or, or on GitHub. GitHub. So yeah. I'm like, you know, I sometimes it's like, it's not worth the hassle if it's like, yeah, exactly that. If I'm cross-referencing people 
from three different groups. Uh, it's a bit like going in and saying like, I need people with all these three skills. If they're in these three meetup groups that are specifically on those three skills, then like, I know that they're at least like has a level of interest in those, you know, either frameworks or a new skill. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that subgroup of them that are in, in two out of three or all three of them. Uh, and then if there's, you know, if half of them only has their first name, I'm going to take them out to begin with. And I'm just going to look at the ones where I can get a first and last name. Um, yeah. Because then I have a first and last name. I have a location most of the time. And I probably have, I can put in the, the, the skill keywords about the groups. And that's going to give me results. And it, it, like, I don't care what their meetup, what their LinkedIn profile says at that point, because I know that they have an interest enough to sign up for a meetup group about it. Um, yeah. Even more powerful if I know that they've gone to some of the events that they talked about specific, you know, niche technologies. Then it kind of you, in that exactly. case, you targeting top people because yeah. those you don't want just a member; you want someone who's active. No, exactly, in, and in it, the community. And those exactly who are going that. to the events, they are active. So it is because you have even the ones with like ten thousand members. Like you look at each event; it's a hundred and fifty, maybe four hundred, depending on the groups, and it's like. And then you start seeing the people who go to all of those events. They're the ones you want, you want to talk to. It's a bit like, you know, going back, we talked before, like conference sourcing is like, you'll start with the speakers. Then you start looking at, can I get attendee lists? Even more powerful is like, if I can get the attendee list from the last three events, who are the ones who's been to all three of them? And that's what Meetup gives you the opportunity for because it's open uh, and with the different tools that are there, uh, both that Aaron has, has been showing, uh, but Andre more and more are working with. So using the Meetup APIs to yeah. actually to get Meetup to give you the information about who's the member who went to this event. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, uh, Aaron Lynch did some of that in his uh, is in his conference uh, app sourcing. Um, the Which way is that brilliant. He, it but is. It, it's more it, about it thinking about the idea of like how to use like how to source on Meetup. It, because it is brilliant, it, you know, it kind of opens up another world. I think that those who are watching and who don't even understand what we're talking about, because there might be, you know, a lot of, that it sounds complicated, but having in mind that Meetup is not necessarily the first place where I would search because it just be really time consuming. So what you want to do is if you really know, very, if you're working on a very specific niche requ requirements, and uh, remember that people on LinkedIn, they might be hiding from you. They don't want to talk to you or they're not necessarily are on LinkedIn. Knowing where they hang out is the most important part. And, and meetups is, you know, now it's a little bit more trickier because people don't meet face to face anymore, but still they went virtual. A lot of meetups are still happening. Yeah. Maybe even now, I haven't checked it, but maybe there's potential that there are even more people joining because everything is virtual. So, uh, but you will see all of those and all of that information in, in the actual meetup. So I can give an example with, uh, with Slack. Um, I mean, even with meetup, when I'm thinking about it, like I was working once on a role with, uh, with Adidas where we needed to find a senior manager for content writing. And this is very specific. And one of the key requirements was knowledge about football. So they needed a football fan and and I was like, okay. And they were flexible. You didn't need to be a German speaker, uh, but the company was based in Germany and the person should be based in Germany. So I was like, okay, this is not something that I would be able to find on LinkedIn per se. Uh, some people do mention affiliation to a football club or maybe they work for a football club when it comes to social media or content writing, but it's not as obvious. And it was not that many, there were not that many profiles that you know, were suiting me. So what I did, I started looking into different football, um, different football uh, meetups for fans and trying to identify the patterns in some way. So I started scraping those lists. And then I was, just to make it on the fastest possible way, I was removing all the generic one word names with just the first name because I didn't have time. And I was focusing on then what I have the first name and the last name that looks decent, I would put that into a big Excel or build builder. Um, so I just dump, you know, just paste a lot of names and it automatically creates or statements 
and I would be just copying them and just trying to find them on LinkedIn and just see, see what, what is happening. That was like, what, a year and a half ago. I know that right now there are even more faster ways of doing it because you can, you can do it much faster, you know, but with Andre's tool, for example, uh, and that was not, a, I don't think that was around when I was doing that back then with the bookmarklet when you can just download the meetup um, you know, all the profiles and it's, it's a CSV file, uh, you know, that's perfect. But it's always about the enrichment of data, which is a more tricky thing because getting that is easy, but no, no, nothing, nothing more. You need to do something with it. And that's where a lot of time can be wasted because it might not necessarily lead to anywhere. Um, you know, I had another example when we were looking for we needed, uh, for one of the companies, we needed a data visualization senior manager who would be not only knew about, you know, SQL, R, and all of the kind of basic things that everyone needs to know in that industry, but at the same time to be influential in the industry, uh, be speaking at the events, kind of be visible. Yeah. Um, because they wanted to create in the company, they wanted to create like a data visualization team from scratch and they needed that, you know, kind of lighthouse, like a beacon who would just drive the force and, and, and speak to others about it. And I remember was, I started doing my, my search on, on LinkedIn and, and then when I started talking to, to some of the really good candidates, I just started asking like, okay, are there any events that you go to? Do you belong to any communities? Like, where can I? Because that person said, you know, uh, I think that was out of budget. Like, the, the person was, you know, paid more than what the company was able yeah. to offer. So he would not be able to consider the job, which is normal, you know. And, and I said, look, can you help me? Can you help me find the right person? Because it's a brilliant opportunity. It's a great brand. And it is about bringing more of data visualization, which is, very geeky if you belong to a community, you know, just like with sourcing is the same thing. And basically he said, oh yeah, there's a Slack group uh, that has like, I don't know, 300 people. I was like, well, that's perfect because it's the, you know, the, the top of the top maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's like when we belong to some of the Facebook groups that have 115 people, you know that there are some of the best people are in that group. You don't need to be in like 10,000 people group. Exactly. It's not about the number. And, and I was like, okay, how do I get there? Because if I'm gonna be you know, using my work email, someone's gonna notice. And I don't necessarily want that. So I was like, okay, I needed to apply, like to fill in the, the questionnaire to get into a Slack group. And I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm taking this as a, as a challenge that I'm someone who is completely new to data visualization and R and, but just like it's with sourcing, we are really open to when people come without no knowledge and who want to learn. So you, you don't see it as a threat in, in any way. So I just filled that questionnaire as a, you know, saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really new because there was like, there were like 15 questions. It, it would be very easy for them to know that I know nothing just by asking a question. Of course. So I wasn't trying to pretend. I just said the way it is. My, I was approved and I couldn't believe that. <laughs> and then I scraped all of, the, all of the people. And with data analytics, the thing is that a lot of people know about data protection. So they try to hide themselves online. It's very hard to get their real names or their real data. It's really bizarre. But um, it just shows how tricky everything is. Um, out of that, I found 25 maybe people um, that I potentially had enough information to cross-reference on LinkedIn and that were mm -hmm. matching the profile potentially because first of all, it was very senior role. So that was supposed to be a person with already enough experience. So I remember I came to the hiring manager um, who, who, like, who was the director of, of, in the team. And I said, look, this is an experiment. Um, if I look at those people profiles on LinkedIn, it means nothing. Uh, but I know that they belong to this really tiny group. 
potentially they are really active. And as well, I was cross-referencing them on Twitter. And that's where data visualization people yeah. are most active was Twitter and Slack. And that was an example where we ended up uh, reaching out to maybe 10 or 11 people. And we ended up having maybe two or three interviews out of that. But we, we were still struggle to find that kind of level, really yeah. bright person who was, because there was no budget for that level person, which is a shame. But, um, but yeah, so that was my experience of like kind of diving into, that was my experience of just diving into something a bit different um, as well. I mean, and that's for like, yeah, I had specific where that was where, where main thing where I went. And that goes with Reddit, Meetup, Slack. None of them will be the first place I go. Uh, it would always be like, where would I normally look? But it, it comes back to a lot of the times of we saying it's like, look where the people that you're looking for would normally hang out. Um, Shamila van der Thunen did like, she did a perfect talk a couple of years ago as well. But that's like, there is a community called like, like where people talk about GitHub, it's called Gitter. It's basically a social network for people who talk about things on GitHub. But you wouldn't go there unless like you're interested in that. But uh, same thing is like, how do you kind of behave yourself on a community that's very specific about developers? So uh, it, it's definitely, yes, this wouldn't be the first place I would go. And I would read up on whatever I can, follow people like, um, like Aaron, uh, Aaron Matthew, for, you know, look at what Andre and what Aaron has done on Meetup. Um, look at people like Greg Hawks that does a lot of kind of looking at different community. Uh, look at, follow, um, you know, people like that and look at what, what they're giving out. Look at talks like what, what Aaron did a couple of years ago to really get into it. Research all you can before you start going out, scraping lists and just contacting left and right. Because you, you can get people who are like, why, you know, I, if I pe find people on Meetup, I'm not going to contact them on Meetup. Although I could, like Meetup does have a kind of, if you're both a member of the same Meetup group, you can contact them directly. But that, uh, it's I not, think that it, it, it was possible, even if you don't belong to a Meetup, you can still send a message. Yeah, it, but it, for me, it's like, that's not the place I want to contact people. No. Like I, I'd rather go and then like, you know, if I can contact them on LinkedIn, more of a, that's where I would naturally go or send them an email and saying, I would have no problem kind of saying like, I saw that we're both a member of this meetup group, or even if I'm not a member, I saw that you're a member of this meetup group because it's not, everybody knows that it's public membership directory. So yeah, have a look at that, but definitely research yeah. it first before you start using like, you know, going out and scraping like crazy. And another thing actually that I was just remembered, Goodreads. Mm -hmm. Because if you know what the people you're after are reading, uh, you can potentially find their usernames or even their names. I did it in an experiment once. I was so bored. I was in between <laughs> jobs. I had nothing to do. And I was like, okay, I think... I'm not sure which book was it. Was it Jan's book or was it Katrina's book? It might have been Jan's book uh, that I did an experiment with. So I thought, okay, people who are, yeah, it was Jan's book because with Katrina, it can be HR people as well. But with Jan, it, it will be a source or a recruiter. You know, HR person would not be reading Jan's book. I, but I, that's, that's just my assumption. So, and I thought, okay, uh, when he released this, the second edition of mm -hmm. the book, um, I went on Goodreads and I looked into people who were, who, because it shows you when you're on the app, it shows you who is currently reading or who rated it or left a comment or whatever. And then of course, it depends on your settings, whether you're using your real name or fake name or uh, 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 alias or whatever. But I thought, okay, I want to challenge myself to find a real person and send them a message. And it was so funny. It was a recruiter in Ukraine. Um, I found her on LinkedIn. I sent her an invite to connect and said, hey, um, Anna, um, I, just, I just saw that you were reading, um, you know, I just saw it on Goodreads, which you're reading uh, Jan's book, Full Stack Recruiter. And, you know, I just got this book myself and I was really curious, you know, to hear your opinion about it because there are so many things, you know, in general, 
is there anything new that you've learned or something like that? And, and I wasn't really expecting anything. And I just left it in less than a day. I get a message like, Oh my God, like this is like the coolest thing that happened to me is like, please tell me that you were trying to headhunt me. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I, was just, I was just bored, you know? And just like, we, everyone in the office said like, this is like the coolest thing. I was like, well, but this is public data. I didn't really, you know, at, at that time, I didn't even think that it's something creative, you know, because it was just like that curiosity. Can I find someone? So I, I believe that it's the same, potentially could be the same with developers. Of course, they're more careful than maybe recruiters because they don't want to be found as easily as recruiters don't really care. You know, no, you want to be there visible. You'll be amazed though. Like there's still like, if you have like, you know, a, a, a very specific, topic book they will write things on amazon about books about development like some of the classics um i know that like yeah goodreads is one pair but I've, I've seen people use the you know people commenting on those books on amazon from america yeah. like because you know it's like if you read that book you're a developer so if you're commenting on that book you know, like, and a lot of them is like, well, verified Amazon purchase and you have the full name. Uh, sometimes you can go in, you can say what their wish list is and things like that. So no, definitely. There's a lot of rabbit holes to go down when you go to that. But yeah, as we said, have a look first about kind of like, what is it you want to get out? Because this is one of those big rabbit holes that yes, you can get people that might not normally get contacted, but at the same time, you know, you're not going to, that's not going to be your bread and butter. Yeah. And at the same time, just be playful. You know, sometimes, you know, the, sometimes the the coolest and craziest ideas will come when you le least expect it and just remember it and then just play it out. And you don't necessarily need to test it when you're actually doing the job. You can test it, you know, as, as an experiment, just, just be playful. It's like doing sourcing games. You, the things which you do there, you're not necessarily going to be doing in your job, but you still do it for the sake of learning something new. And when you, when you step outside of what you normally do and, and try to do something different, that's when curiosity steps in and that's where new ideas come in. And by doing that, you might connect with other people who are doing something similar, or then you're going to go to a, uh, to a conference or an event or a meetup or whatever, and someone goes to say, oh, yeah, you know, are you, you know, this and that, you know, I remember like it happened with, with Katrina when at the, at, the, um, at the sourcing meetup that you guys were organizing when she was talking about uh, engagement. And I, I remember I said something about sourcing on WhatsApp and a crowd looked at me like I'm a, <laughs> you know, you know, not sourcing on WhatsApp, but using WhatsApp to approach candidates. And yeah. You know, now everyone is doing that, but that was 2017. So, uh, no, that was already 18, but I was doing that since 2017, and that's perfect. And there was one funniest situation when I remember I was trying everything, and I knew the th person's phone number, and I was like, I hate cold calling. Like, yeah. I, I think it's rude. But I saw that the person is on WhatsApp, and I remember I got the approval from my manager to use WhatsApp for work. It's like, perfect. <laughs> And, and I sent a, rec a recorded a voice memo. And I remember, I'll never forget, he was a sales recruiter. Uh, he responded within like five minutes, like, dude, the audio was so shit, I couldn't hear anything. Just call me in 10 minutes. <laughs> that's all you need, yeah. It worked, Yeah, you know? It worked. That's, that's the thing, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, someone, I remember it's, it's exactly a similar debate that someone was having on LinkedIn or on Facebook that, oh, you know, lazy recruiters, like you should not be having, you know, typos in your, in your approach messages. And Teddy, our friend Teddy, she said, look, I love leaving message, like mistakes in the messages because it shows that I'm human. Yeah. It shows that I'm not a robot. It shows that it wasn't proofread it. It's not and, polished. Yeah, it's not polished. Yeah. And this is how it works. And she's like, I spoke to my teams and said, they, they said everything is perfect. So we don't need to overstretch and be perfect. Just be yourself. It's the same way, you know, when I use videos to approach, it's like, yes, I could re-record it and re-record it, or I can just shoot it in one go and send it off.
sometimes I forget what I'm supposed to say. Sometimes I mispronounce something. Uh, my wife does the same thing. And we're like, you know what? It doesn't matter because this isn't a corporate image video. It's a short message to get somebody to set up a call with you. It's not supposed to be perfect. And you wouldn't be perfect when you're on the phone, when you talk in person and things like that. So why are we always trying to hyper polish everything and make it, yeah. you know, make it perfect? It, it's not going to be. So it's like, yes, it's not ideal when you have typos and, you know, we all, we all have them. And sometimes it's just like own the mistakes. Like I've sent emails after making a mistake on something. I sent the email. And I'm like, I forgot to update this and that. And they were like, and you sent, you sent one straight after. It's like, obviously I meant this, not that, whatever my email said, but it's like, it just makes you look human and you get a much better response. I mean, the only, like the worst type of it you can do is wrong name. <laughs> it, or, or if you uh, leave the tag, your first name and you don't put in the first name or you do the wrong tag so that yeah. it looks automated because it probably is. Uh, yeah, exactly. They do the, and I've done the wrong lot. I've done the wrong first name because I was copy pasting to have the, the template and I forgot to change the, I've done that as well. And it's like, yeah, it's not ideal, but you know. Okay, one, by the way, I, I, have a, I have a confession to make. So can you go on my LinkedIn profile right now? I'm really curious if you're going to notice that. So I've been, I, I'm, I'm trying to test one thing <laughs> just to see how many people read my profile. Oh, uh, what? Like how to pronounce your name? No. Okay, that's not that. No, no, go into the about section when you have like the, 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 the short thingy because I kept it there all the time but saying, hey, if you want to connect, I'm happy to do that, but just drop me a short message intro, like why mm -hmm. you want to connect. Now I went a step further. <laughs> With a passcode. <laughs> <laughs> so far, no one used it. No, of course not because they don't, uh, if they read your about section, they don't click on the more. But yeah, uh, Jan did an experiment with everybody who sent him connection requests on LinkedIn. Um, he sent them, he sent them a link to his website, which was a personalized website where it has their name on it specifically for them, and he could track it. Uh, which was basically like, oh, you connected with me on LinkedIn. Since you didn't write a message, I have no clue who you are. Maybe you wanna like, maybe you somebody who wants a job with my organization, whatever it is. But just really wrote it out like different. Like this is the different ways. Like if you're this looking for a job, if you're looking for a job, this is where to go. If you're looking for the book, this is where you can buy it. You know, like no, being young, uh, but personalizing it based on the name of the person in there, just to kind of see what would people do. Uh, and I loved him doing that. And I, I think part of that. I think he, he I think he delivered a talk about it. He did deliver a talk. I'm not sure if he put it in the, in the latest book as well, but I, I love that because it's so young where he's like, I got a thousand people. They're not writing a message. So I'm like, I don't, you know, maybe they're interesting, but I just couldn't be bothered going through all of them. So I, so he's just like, he said, I automated it. If there was no message, and like I just send them this and then it was up to them. And a lot of them, like some of them actually wrote back. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to like, this is where we met. This is why I want to connect. Fair enough. And, but most of them just never got back to him. So it's like, okay, easy. Thing. Yeah. You know, that, that's why in a way I'm against growth hacking because there's no, and we talked about it. Like there's no point in, what's the point in having 30,000 connections on, on LinkedIn and maxing it out if you don't even know who you're connecting with? Or you don't know why you, like, why you have those. You know, yeah. what, what, it's, yeah, it's actually, network, network is good because they're connected with somebody who's connected with somebody. But it's like, but what about like, especially if you max out, what about those new people that you want to connect with and you can't? So I can give an example, Instagram. It's a very interesting concept because if we compare LinkedIn and Instagram, there are some parallels that are pretty similar. But the way they look at it, it's actually really clever that if you analyze, and there are different tools to analyze your own profile, whether you're a recruiter or you're anyone, like it doesn't matter. You just, you can analyze your own mm -hmm. uh, the, the quality of your own profile. And what it does, it checks your followers. It checks the ratio of how many followers you have and how many, you, how many accounts you follow. Then it looks into the quality of your followers, mm -hmm. uh, meaning how many, if you have followers who follow more than 1,500 accounts, <laughs> those are automatically flagged as mass followers yeah. and their value is zero. Like they do more damage to you 
might as, as well a, be a bot. As, yeah. a, as a person, as a brand for engagement, because for Instagram, everything is all about the engagement. And this is what I'm trying to teach artists to not to follow many accounts, to remove spammy accounts, because think about it, you know, how much time can you scroll on your feed? If you're following 4,000 accounts or even 2,000 accounts, you will not be engaging with everyone which you follow. And this kind of is defeats the purpose of you following someone. So then the, 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 the second question is, are you doing it because you, you were trying to follow someone so you'd be able to follow you back? And yeah. that's a lot of like you follow, follow, follow. Yeah. LinkedIn has the same disease. You connect with someone because you want to connect, but then you don't really care. Like, I don't care connecting with everyone who attended SOSU in the first place because there are a lot of people, you've seen a lot of people who go to conferences and instead of connecting and networking in the evening, they go sightseeing. Yeah. They don't understand the opportunity that they're getting and they're losing out on all the opportunities, you know? And so it's the same. What's the point in just faking those numbers? So yeah. I think we kind of got off the topic a bit, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, feel that it's still connected because... Exactly. You know, think about it. Like you can, you can source on Instagram, you can source on Twitter, you can source in any platform that has communities where people are hanging out. Yeah. I can give an example when, um, because with my sourcing, it's very, very diverse in the sense that I was even sourcing musicians. Mm -hmm. So, and that was the, the coolest part um, when, uh, when I left uh, my rec to rec experience in London, I went freelancing for a bit and I was approached by a Swedish music uh, pla uh, startup, uh, Melobi, and they were basically well, like a startup, uh, like Tinder for music, really cool. And music is my life. So <laughs> that was where my blog was already picking up a bit. And, uh, and I was like, okay. And the concept was that we were uh, able to bring any artist that you like then the, the artists had to create their profile and upload music and it's for free. And I was paid for the amount of people that I bring onto the platform. And of course, me being me, I was going not for the easy to get, but I was going for really, like I've discovered the guy who had 19 likes on Facebook, who's better than Calvin Harris. And for me, this is discovery. Yeah. You know, or not someone that was played on BBC Radio 1, that's lazy. And, and then I remember I, I found this one really incredible artist from Brighton and Brighton is full of musicians because they have been there, uh, one of the uh, music institutes. And, and I was like, okay, let me use my sourcing hat here. And I dived into his Facebook when Graph was still open. Graph search, uh, yeah. So I looked into all of his groups. I looked into the pages that he liked, but I identified really fast the communities that he belonged to. What I did then, I looked into, I identified the communities that seemed to be related to where he was, had the closest relationship with. And then I started diving into those communities and looking into members of those communities. And I started putting the map in my head together saying, okay. Um, and I would be, and, and the coolest part was that in that case, I was approaching everyone on Facebook because every artist has their Facebook page. Yeah. So I can really directly message them. So I approached 1,000 people in six months doing two days a, a week. That was just very minimum, but I was going for quality, not for just for the number. And, and within a week, because he signed up on the platform and he was really happy. And whenever I would be signing up, I would say, hey, by the way, this guy that we, we have a mutual connection with, he is already on the platform. And because it was for free, you, you don't have anything to lose. No, exactly. Within a week, I had 20, I think 15, 20 people from Brighton signed up on the platform, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And this was the sourcing brain because it just shows that for me, it's just seeing patterns, what you, where, where those patterns are and what are the hashtags, right? Mm -hmm. Like for Twitter, uh, for Instagram, like where do, where do those people go? I always say like even to musicians, if you want to know how well you're doing on your socials, find artists who are in the same niche and try to understand the hashtags and the concepts that they're using, what content they're posting. That's what you need to focus on. But yeah. it goes with everyone. It's the same, you know, we, we spoke about communities, like right? 
if you you will only be able to potentially get something out of the community if you give something exactly you will not be able just to take 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 straight away they don't even know you so but when you already have this kind of one person that can introduce you that's incredible that will open doors exactly perfect look let's leave it there um as you all know by now dov and i can talk for hours um, easy we don't, we don't necessarily need to uh, record it all uh but we will be back next week again with uh, more talks about sourcing and what's going on from our point of view uh and definitely follow dov if you are in any way interested in music independent music independent music artists um so definitely follow up with that but also yeah let us know if there's anything you want us to talk about um share this with your friends and with your colleagues uh we are hoping to continue to build this community and bring you more things not just weekly but you know constantly build on the kind of sourcing challenge brand and branch out from that with things that we can do uh whether that's you know events live events um training whatever building that community around that and and continue building at that this is this is the cornerstone of that this weekly show uh but there's going to be much more coming in the the next years and uh yeah i'm glad that i have dub as part of this um, i'm you know I, i i said many times to you like i don't see anyone else that i would be able to do this with on a such a level where we 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 are just chatting away and that's yeah. that's what makes it so easy i can only hope that this is interesting and useful for others as well not just us because you know otherwise i would just lose the concept <laughs> but as well before we say goodbye i want to remind you that uh, until next week you are able to get one of these babies signed by wonderful friend of ours katrina collier and just as well there are still slots basically for a robot proof i always mix it up like robot proof <laughs> my 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 mouth doesn't work robot proof recruiter mastermind which is going to be launching on the 16th of february yeah. it's going to be a one year challenge uh, like a mastermind course i will be part of it few of a really cool people will be part of it glen who was co- uh, co-host with uh, katrina on their podcast he's going to be there as well and this is an incredible opportunity to be close one on one and in a to build your own community with hr and recruitment people in one place yeah and check it out and we will be sharing this time we will be sharing information properly with you guys how you can do it <laughs> we will make sure to flood the internet and we want your help to do it the same so uh you will be able to get this book and who knows maybe we're going to add some something uh some special other prizes uh, as well to motivate you guys so uh, exactly. as mark said you know we will return here no matter what no matter where we are we will return every week <laughs> yes yeah. let, 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 let us know what you want us to talk about or if you have any uh, ideas definitely uh, but yeah we'll be back um thank you dov for for being on with me for another week and i'll see you again next week see you soon see you soon